Hello and welcome to Griffin Art. Now, with Christmas fast approaching, we're perhaps increasingly having our attention turned towards parties and entertaining. And as it's possible that some of you would like to embellish your dinner table with a folded napkin uh, if you're taking a more formal approach, I thought that I would introduce you to a very effective but equally simple napkin fold today. Now, this napkin fold does have a few names that I'm aware of. It's been called the Bird of Paradise, the Roaring Rooster, and also the Coxcomb, because as you can probably see here, it does resemble the comb that's located on top of a cockerel's head. Now, for the purposes of this tutorial, I will be using a standard paper napkin or serviette, simply because it will take the creases more readily. When I'm working with linen or fabric napkins, I tend to work with um, my iron and ironing board so that I can really get those creases in place. And obviously that's going to be a lot more difficult for me to do on video. Also, if you are new to napkin folding, I would certainly recommend that you use a paper serviette anyway, because it's going to hold the structure of the design much better. Now the paper napkins that we get over here in the new in the UK do tend to be in the region of 16 inches uh, square when they're opened out, although in reality they are rarely square. This one in front of me here is about 15 and a half inches by 15 and three quarter inches. Now the fabric napkins do tend to be slightly bigger. This one is an Egyptian cotton napkin and actually when it's fully opened out it is in the region of 18 inches square if that's any use to you. Now just because some of you may opt to start out and work with a um, fabric napkin that will be completely flat, I'm opening up that paper serviette to start with just to uh, be totally detailed about the fold. So whether you are working with fabric or paper, you're starting out with a single square layer of material as we've got in the front of me here. So the first thing that we do is we simply fold that in half. So this one is already creased, so it goes into place very nicely. Corners and sides meeting just into half. Then, as I'm sure you've guessed, you're folding that into half again so that the the material is now into a quarter section, so, and we're going like that. Now, it's best at this point to position your napkin so that this end is the sealed end. You can see perhaps just the two folds, and this end nearest to you has got all the four layers separate. So all we're going to do now is again fold in half, but across this diagonal section this time. So we're forming a triangular shape. Now we've already discussed the fact that the napkin is not square. So you're not going to be able to get the two points exactly aligned simply because of that. So just fold it and you can see here that I've left quite a border. It's better that these folds are on the inside of that triangle rather than on the outside. And just apply pressure along that fold line so that the napkin will crease nicely. Now, if you're on track so far, this means that fold, you've, the top layer are all these separate layers. So as long as you've got that scenario, you're absolutely fine. Now at this point, we're going to start to form a kite shape. So we're actually going to be folding so that this edge is going to meet up with the center position of this triangle. So you're just taking this corner here and you, know, you might want to apply some pressure down here if it's bubbling up for whatever reason. And you're folding that section so that that line is coming straight down and you're getting this kite shape. And again, you're just going to apply pressure to keep that in place. And you, we're going to, once you've done that, so I hope you can see how that's forming, you're going to just repeat that to the other side. So, you know, if necessary, just um, encourage that to stay flat in that, along that edge. And just bring that down so that we're now really forming a kite shape. Now, it doesn't matter 
if you've got a gap down the middle here and if you're if you're working with fabric it's unlikely that you will be able to pull this join tightly together don't worry about it it's absolutely fine just get it as close to the center as you can at this stage now the next thing that we're going to do is just to fold this over so just flip it like that so that you've now got the kite showing on the other side all right now we're going to fold these corners down one at a time and again they don't have to be absolutely tight against here but just get them as tight as you can you form this corner and again because of the bulk you are not going to be able to get a really tight corner here the the bulk of even in paper won't allow it so you definitely won't get that if you're working with fabric again so we're just going to do that on both sides so that we're bringing that back to a triangular shape again. So with that done, we're back to folding in half again and we're folding in half along this line here. So you're just bringing this corner to meet this corner. So if I turn that, you'll be able to see a little better. It's just coming up to meet that corner there. So you're halving that triangle. And if I show you the underside, you'll be able to see you, you're looking for that. If it's opening up, that's what you're going to be seeing, hopefully. And I just tend to make sure that this area is well creased. And then at the top, I'm hoping that you can see, you should have all those little layers apparent at that top section. They should all show. Now, assuming that that's the case, we can now start to pull individually on the layers. So you just want the very first layer. So I'm hoping that you can see, this is the first layer. There's one, there's three remaining down in the, in the end there. So we're just working on one at a time. And you're just going to want to gently pull on that layer. If I turn it on its side, you might see a bit better. So we're just pulling it gently. It depends how well you've creased your, um, your, the, the, the folds as to how tightly that will be held in but just gently pull you don't want to tear the the napkin which obviously is a perhaps a problem with paper ones and then you're going to just continue again so you get the next layer you just gently pull it up now you're not necessarily pulling it up to exactly meet the previous one you can always pull them a bit further at the end if you want to readjust them so you're just pulling that up each time that one's coming too. You can just hold that back. So just pull that up. You might want to just curl them around a bit, depending on how it goes. And then once that's done, I do tend to sort of flatten it out again. So it helps particularly with paper ones, just to keep those little points in place. And that's basically your coxcomb napkin fold. So that's basically it. But for those of you who are actually working with fabric napkins, I just want to give you a little bit of extra information. Now I did mention that this napkin here is made of Egyptian cotton and I do like cottons because they tend to hold a crease as well. The fabric itself has a certain rigidity about it. But if you have napkins that are of a softer fabric and you want to use them maybe because they're the right color for your decor, then I just want you to be aware that you can actually apply some spray starch to your fabrics in order to improve that rigidity. Now, if I show you this one here, this is a Dylon product, but uh, I believe Robin did a similar product. And if you can't find either of these, then just search on Google and something will come up for you. So if you just spray that onto the fabric and then iron your creases in, that should improve the situation for you. Well, that's quite a short video, but I hope that it's served its purpose and you are successful with your napkin fold. To help you a little bit further, I have created a document of step-by-step -step instructions and you can download that from my website at griffinart.co.uk and I'll include a link to that in the description area of this video for you. As always, thank you for choosing to watch one of my videos and I hope that you will be able to join me for the next one.